Bar Council for the invitation and opportunity to address this year's Bar Conference. I'm aware that it is a privilege, so I'll be brief and not abuse it. I've been fortunate and blessed to have chalked a few significant firsts in my political career. The sweetest being naturally to have been the first opposition leader in the Fourth Republic to have won the presidency of our nation on the first ballot. But I can say that the privilege that has been given to me, a member of the bar, hopefully in good standing, <laughs> to be the first sitting president of the Republic to address this conference ranks almost as equally sweet. And I'm particularly happy to do it in the capital of the region of the birthplace of Kufi Abrefa Bouzia, one of the greatest champions of Ghanaian democracy. The reason is not far to seek. This association, the Ghana Bar Association, has meant so much to me. When I was in practice, I was very active in its affairs, as some of the older members may recollect. I was so because I believed then, and continue still so to believe, that the noblest chapters in the modern history of the Ghanaian people so far have been written by lawyers. The writing was begun by the first lawyer, the immortal John Mensah Saba, in the last part of the 19th century. There can be little doubt that the work he, Joseph Kessler Hafen, another lawyer, and their other colleagues in the Aborigines Rights Protection Society did to ward off the greedy hands of British imperialism and keep control of our lands in our own hands was the first monumental step towards the making of modern Ghana. One has only to reflect on the complicated land inheritance that our brothers and sisters of Southern and Eastern Africa, who suffered the sequestration of their lands at the same time by the white colonists, have endured to acknowledge the importance of their contribution to the growth of Ghana. Further chapters were written by the likes of Thomas Hutton Mills, Kwab Masichi, Kojo Thompson, Akila Pasoya, all lawyers who maintained the momentum of nationalist agitation initiated by the ARPS. In 1948, in that fateful year, when the, that agitation which reached new, unprecedented heights, with the senseless killings by the colonial police of the three nationalist martyrs, the ex-servicemen Sergeant Ajete Corporal Atipu and Private Odati Lamti, of the six persons who were arrested and fixed with responsibility by the colonial power for that development, and whom Aiken Watson chairman of the celebrated Watson Commission, characterized as the most active members of the UGCC's working committee, and who have gone down in Ghanaian legend as the Big Six. Four of them, Joseph Wachidangwa, Emmanuel Obecha Bilanti, Ebenezer Akwaje, Edward Okufuado, were lawyers. One, William Oforeata, a decade later, subsequently became a lawyer. And the sixth, Kwame Nkrumah, or Sajifu, was apparently prevented by the arcane mysteries of Roman law from becoming a lawyer. So as you can see, the responsibility of lawyers of setting our country on the road to freedom and national in independence was great. Succeeding generations of lawyers have remained committed 
to the goal of securing not only the independence of Ghana, but also the establishment of the body politic of our nation on the foundation of respect for the rule of law, individual liberties and human rights, and the principles of democratic accountability. Values whose promotion are at the core of this association's historic mission. I refer here to the works of lawyers like Crunchy Taylor, Akua Sabia, Joe Apia, Victor Owusu, B.J. Darocha, J.E. Jantua, F.A. Jantua, Johnny Hanson, Obeda Samoa, Ray Kakraba Kwashi, Anthony Mir, and Obing Menu Senior. In more immediate times, lawyers have been at the forefront of the struggle against authoritarian rule. Peter Ala Ajete, Sam Okujeto, Nuti Fafa Kwehenya, Akuto Ampa, all members of this association were prepared to suffer the deprivation of preventive detention in defense of liberty and accountability in our nation. They joined the others in the pantheon of great of Ghanaian patriots who devoted themselves in the face of great odds to the ideals of freedom and justice. And who can forget the collective heroic determination of the bar in the 1970s and 80s to bring an end to the era of military rule and help engineer the restoration of democratic constitutional governance to our country. Future historians will look kindly on the activities of the bar and speak of them with commendation. I have outlined in brief this tale of the bar's history to underline its collective responsibility for the establishment of the Fourth Republic on the principles of the separation of powers and respect for the rule of law and fundamental human rights. And I believe it is in the exercise of that responsibility that you have chosen for the theme of this conference, and I quote, saving the future generation from the scourge of corruption and environmental hazards, the role of the legal profession, unquote. The twin goals of the theme speak to two of the most important challenges of our national governance today. We all know that if we do not get a handle on corruption, we will not be able to develop our nation. By the same token, if we do not win the fight against environmental hazards, especially the battle against Gal the Galamse phenomenon, we will have no nation to speak of. I am fully committed as President of the Republic to doing all in my power to confront these twin challenges. And in this endeavor, I ask for the wholehearted support of this association. I need your support to ensure the success of these battles. The Office of Special Prosecutor, which is in the office, and which is an attempt to take the politics out of prosecutions of present and past public officers, i.e. echoes of so-called witch hunting, needs the active support of the bar to realize its goals. I am satisfied of the constitutionality of the creation of the office, even though I am aware that I do not have the last word when it comes to pronouncements on matters constitutional. But it would certainly be remiss of me if I did not satisfy myself of the, on the constitutional aspect before I put it before the Ghanaian people. It will be members of the bar who will provide the personnel for the office. Much of its success will depend on their integrity and genuine commitment to the fight against corruption. In the same vein, the executive needs the cooperation of the bench and bar 
as the Attorney General stated in her speech this morning, to ensure speedy prosecutions of those allegedly involved in illegal Galamse activities. It is important that deterrents are quickly dispersed to reinforce the abhorrence abhor of the Ghanaian nation about the illegal Galamse activities which threaten our very survival and future. Mindful of each other's prerogatives and duties, I'm calling for us, the bar, bench, and the executive, to enter into a grand alliance to fight and defeat the twin scourges in the supreme interest of the Ghanaian people. And in the fight against corruption, <laughs> and in the fight against corruption for my part, I shall lead by example. Let me conclude by assuring our new Chief Justice, a worthy occupant of that great office, and the state's lawyers in the Ministry of Justice, that my government, within the constraints of our public finances, unfortunately I was left with an empty treasury, which, which I am now systematically trying to rebuild will do its very best to address issues of remuneration, conditions of service, and the logistical needs of the judiciary and the Ministry of Justice. That is the least you should expect of a government headed by one of your own. We are in it together, the great noble adventure of self-government, popular government, free government. Let us put our shoulders to the wheel so the future generations will appreciate our contribution to the making of a successful democratic Ghana, which guarantees the liberties of our people, the institutions of good governance, the cohesion of our society, the well-being of the masses, and the peace and prosperity of our nation. The Black Star has a tryst with destiny. Let us work together to make it happen. Let me finally wish you a successful conference, the contents of which appear, from what I can glean from the program, to be more focused and valuable than those that I can remember from yesteryear. I echo and long may it continue. Once again, thank you and may God bless us all in our homeland, God, and make that great place.